Thank you everyone for joining us for this webcast on the governance model update for OSLC. We will have a presentation from Kartik Kanakasabisan giving some background on, on what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how it's going to impact you. And then we will have a presentation from Lee Reem Snyder, an actual demo of uh, using some of the new features that have been added to the website to help support this new governance model. Kartik, please take it away. Yeah, thank you, Sean. Um, so, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and again, for those that may actually capture this uh, uh, to, to the recording, uh, good evening. Uh, so we'll get right in. Uh, we're going to focus on, again, three key areas. Now, as I as the invite mentioned, we did do a governance update earlier in May, and this is more uh, as a precursor to what's coming down the pipe by the end of the month. Uh, so we'll look at, uh, again, uh, really understanding what is the definition of the OSLC community, uh, the new legal agreements and why, and then also look at the uh, workflows that we, uh, you know, we as a community will encounter when we want to participate uh, uh, in OSLC spec development related activities. So at first, uh, again, kind of defining what the OSLC community is. And as, a, as most of you know, in the past, this was a, a very hard question to, to really answer what exactly did it imply. And to, simply put, anybody who's doing anything with OSLC, whether they're implementing, spec authoring, uh, or participating in some of the decision-making uh, bodies that are around OSLC uh, are part of the OSLC community. But what we're also doing, too, is now actually defining the term of what a member is. Uh, this was one of the challenges that we had initially of defining exactly what members are, and you're actually seeing changes of that actually happening even on the website. Um, you know, initially, being a member constituted going in, uh, going into the wikis, registering and signing up and subscribing to wiki, uh, mailing lists, that necessarily did not ne constitute uh, a, m a membership one. And the other thing was there was nothing binding as such and saying, okay, these are the things that you agree uh, regarding your participation in the community uh, and essentially defining a little bit more meaning of what exactly an OSLC member means. So. Folks that are merely consumers or would want to answer Q&A around their implementation for OSLC um, could remain as general users and would have to, you know, abide by the website terms of use as such. Uh, the members' agreement is more of a more formal acknowledgement of your participation in the OSLC community and also uh, allows you to, you know, state the fact that you as an individual agree uh, to the bylaws of participating in the OSLC community. The benefit of actually signing a member's agreement, uh, depending on how active you are in the community, uh, how you've represented the OSLC community at large, uh, allows you in the future when we do have uh, elections uh, for the steering committee to actually nominate yourself. And we're also introducing this new body called the steering committee. Um, and the steering committee essentially is the overall business direction, communication direction uh, arching uh, body that actually says, okay, such and such spec has been now formalized, and I'd actually given that update earlier in May on what exactly the steering committee uh, meant. Um, and basically, uh, members, OSLC core OSLC members, are the ones that can participate in a steering committee. Now, beyond that, if you want to contribute uh, intellectual property specifically, uh, and that means participating in spec authoring and, and uh, efforts of that nature, uh, you'd have to go ahead and sign something called as a work group participation agreement. And what that essentially implies is that uh, when you are signing, unlike in the past where you could go ahead and develop specifications and um, and then po uh, post facto the fact, you know, once it's done, you would go ahead and sign patent on a cert. Here we're doing it uh, before the fact in this case. Now, who are the steering committee members? Um, you know, these are folks that have been actively participating in the community uh, and are equally concerned about the um, future of OSLC and want to make sure that it actually uh, continues to add value 
uh, to what uh, to what people face as far as integration challenges concerned. To be able to go and say, this is how you can remedy those problems. Um, you know, these are folks again. You know, Reiner Ersch, Andreas Kais, uh, Bola Ratibi from Creative Intellect, which is an analyst firm. Um, uh, David Ingram from Accenture, Mick Kirsten, you know, CEO from TaskTop, and from IBM, we have John Wiegand. And some of you may already know John Wiegand. He um, was one of the founders of the Eclipse uh, Initiative in IBM. And this is, again, another opportunity for him to uh, get involved in starting something new uh, in the context of uh, our community work in this, in this area. So... What does it mean to be a non-OSLC member? These are folks that have not necessarily signed the member's agreement, but are active consumers of technology. Uh, you know, what they would be able to go do is register on the website. Uh, and one of the things that we are going to do is actually uh, encourage people more to be able to go ahead and register on the website. This will at least let us know how vibrant the community is, what kind of engagement's going on, and, uh, and activities that. Uh, could be attributed to that area, contribute to forums, create case studies, and, and contribute to blogs uh, on the OSLC website. All right? These are all uh, activities that are not necessarily uh, have any kind of IP ramifications as such. All right? We would also be, you know, if you've implemented some software and you want that software to be surfaced on the software page uh, of uh, on Open Data Services, folks who are, again, consumers can actually request that their software be listed there as well. Now, the obvious question then comes up, well, what, is it, what are the benefits of being a member? Well, you get all the, all the uh, benefits of non-members, but what you also get is the ability to be part of the decision-making process of OSLC, especially whenever the steering committee uh, is up for election, when the seats in the steering committee are up for election. This is a chance for members who have signed and abided, who agree to the bylaws to actually go and... Um, put their stamp, if you will, on OSLC. Now, the membership agreement is only needs to be signed once. And again, let me reiterate that. It's only signed once, and that is uh, for yourself and the entity that you represent. Now, if perchance when you sign the member's agreement and uh, later on you have changed your organizations, then obviously you have to sign the member's agreement again. But by and large, once you sign the member's agreement, uh, you're free to move around, do whatever you want, and, and things like that. It's all, the, the only time where the WPA kind of comes in is when you're making any kind of an IP contribution to uh, a specification as such. So what is uh, a work group participation agreement? And essentially, this is a prerequisite prior to participating in any work group. And there are some significant uh, value as that we've actually gone ahead and added. First off is, again, a stronger IP policy. This was something that was uh, there earlier, but the IP policy was more, as I said, uh, after the event versus prior to you joining. And this essentially says the fact that, you know, once participating, you are granting a uh, license for people to go ahead and implement, implement the spec that you've gone ahead and developed and so on and so forth. Um, along with that, what, will, what the WPA will also identify is the target standards organization that the spec may move to. Now, this is, this, for some work groups, this may be a challenge, but by and large, this, some, this is the kind of behavior that we want uh, work group participation to kind of think uh, versus think about it after the fact. Um, so this is, again, um, a change from what was the way we operated earlier in, in the community. What this will allow us to do is try to focus, first off, people that want to engage, understand that these are the, these are the organizations that the specification could evaluate. So we want people to understand and understand the IP ramifications uh, of those bodies where the spec may evolve to. The other thing to also understand is that the, the rigor that we've introduced right now is what people are used to when they're dealing with standards organizations. So if they decide that there is some level of affinity of their work that they're doing at OSLC, with the, but also there's also some affinity with the target standards organization, they can join and they know exactly how things work. Uh, the other element of the WPA is the uh, ability to opt out. Um, 
our language around that in the past was not very clear. What we've gone ahead and done in the WPA is actually made the language very clear on what does it mean to opt out. And what that well, opt out essentially is that if you are participating in specification development and you realize that the the obligations uh, that are there involved in specification, you can't necessarily keep up with that, then you have the ability to opt out. What that means is that you may opt out, but the contributions you've already made, those licenses and, uh, and, and the license to use those contributions still persist. It's just that you're not actively going to be involved in authoring specifications going forward. So there's language that we've actually now added uh, to support that. And we're, unlike the membership uh, agreement, the workgroup participation agreement has to be signed for every individual workgroup. And the reason why that is because different workgroups may decide to take their specifications to different standards organizations. And again, this is a fact that we have to go deal with. And again, every workgroup does not have to define only one standard organization. They can define multiple because they might have not figured that part out. So there's flexibility, but people at least understand exactly what are the potential venues where the specification may go eventually to get standardized. And by the, as the specifications evolve, and since we are following an iterative model, uh, we could whittle down and uh, uniquely identify which standards organization is a proper match to the spec that's under development in, at uh, open-services.net. So how will the structure evolved to now that we're introducing steering committee, new governance model, and things of that nature. Now, if you're in a work group, the way you work in a work group is not going to get impacted at all. The, as I said, the only, the only impact that you have is signing a work group participation agreement. And those that have already been participating will have to go ahead and sign a work group participation agreement and a member's agreement initially. So there's, there's an initial uh, hiccup, if you say. Uh, but by and large, the way the work group decisions are made and everything else, they remain as uh, as it was prior to this new governance model coming in. Now, the only change there uh, that it has that that's coming in now is that when you want to, when work groups want to go ahead and finalize uh, a specification, and this is also captured in the work group best practices on the website, uh, is Merely having a specification, a few implementation reports, is not going to satisfy uh, the finalization. This is uh, what we're trying to encourage here is more like a, of a business case development uh, practice, so to speak. So, uh, what will happen is, as part of presenting your spec to finalize, and as presenting what actually happened to the steering committee, the steering committee has the final authority, if you will, to finalize a specification. And the core work group provides the, the technical guidance, as it were. So the steering committee leans a lot on the core work group to make sure that different work groups have satisfied the technical requirements for a work group to be finalized. But while presenting to the steering committee on how a work group gets finalized, you have to provide the specification, the uh, implementation report, and the corresponding uh, test suite in LEO that actually validates the, the specification. Uh, the other optional uh, element that you may also want to add is a document that shows uh, uh, the scenarios that drove those specifications. So what we're essentially saying is that three out of the four, we highly recommend that they be provided as part of the finalization effort. Um, and again, this, this, if, if information is not provided, the steering committee is within its authority to say, you know, you can, you can do better than this uh, to the different work groups. So how will work groups be formed going forward? Now, in the past, the way work groups were formed was uh, an individual would have an idea, write up a nice little uh, email to Steve and myself defining exactly what the focus of the work group was going to be and so on and so forth, and Steve and I will decide, okay, you know, this is this particular email and this request has merit, and then they could go ahead and create you know, uh, a wiki and, and things like that at the, uh, on the OSLC website. Um, going forward, what will be needed is at least four OSLC uh, workgroup uh, members would have to go ahead and uh, uh, would, at a minimum four OSLC members would be needed to create a workgroup. 
and would also identify a work group lead. Now, some of you had gotten a request earlier from Steve Spiker about creating work group charters. Uh, going forward, this will be part of the work group creation request. And what the charter will include is the scope of the work group and a target list of SDOs. So SDO meaning Standards Development Organizations. And again, you don't have to just list only one. Uh, there's a charter template that already has three listed, W3C, OASIS, uh, being two of the three. Uh, and all, and uh, you know, you may also decide that OMG. So again, you know, get the OMG IT policy and make sure you have that link in the uh, uh, in the charter. And also at the same time, once you get the charter developed, you make it available to the OSLC mailing list and say, you know, this is the work group that we're proposing, um, and solicit feedback from the community. Uh, refine the charter based on the feedback, and once you've incorporated those uh, feedback elements, uh, present the uh, the charter and the work group creation request to the steering committee, and the steering committee would then go ahead and approve the work group creation. So a little bit more rigor that we're adding in uh, around the creation of, uh, of a particular work group within the community as it were. So how would this, if I were to kind of show you how the um, overall workflow, how would this actually work, you know, as an individual wanted to go ahead and participate um, in OSLC going forward, uh, there's several options. You decide that you want to work uh, with OSLC to do something, and that something happens to be the fact that you just want to look at the specs, consume it, and make implementations happen. Um, and for that, you can register, uh, read specs, do whatever you want, uh, go to go to Leo, download Leo, run your test suites and things like that, and the reason why I emphasize on the registration part is that's the that's the gate, gating factor to participate in the forums, get questions answered uh, around your implementations. If you're running into challenges uh, uh, or trying to have some kind of a high-level architectural discussion with some of the key leaders in OSLC, you'll be able to use the forums to go ahead and answer those questions. Again, you're not necessarily contributing uh, any specifications or IP uh, there. You're just getting your questions answered and probably even getting support for that matter. Now, if you decide that eventually that you want to now get into the specification, uh, or rather, uh, you know, get into the decision-making body aspect of OSLC, then you have to go sign the member's agreement. And again, once you sign the member's agreement, you can, you know, keep doing what you were doing before, but also uh, that activity now that you are using is also being monitored because when you do decide that you want to be part of the steering committee, that will also be a basis of the uh, basis why you ought to be a steering committee member. The fact that you're le you're a leader in the community, you've actually been actively engaging and reaching out to folks. Uh, those things matter when it comes down to being a steering committee member. Uh, and again, you can nominate yourself, and we'll have elections uh, being held. And like I mentioned in, in the May update, the initial steering committee is for two years, and subsequent to that term, uh, there will be elections held. And again. Folks that are leaders in the community today uh, will be their chance to take on the mantle of a steering committee member going forward. Now, after going from that point on, you decide, you know what, we need to. I, I want to go ahead and author or contribute to uh, a certain set of specifications. That's where the WPA comes in, and the WPA will list out. Uh, Again, the charter of the target work group and the dependencies that it has of different work groups and, and so on and so forth and the relevant IP policy that you're accepting. Uh, now, one thing to understand here, too, is that there are, couple, there are, there are a few things that we're adding. We've also, uh, uh, for work groups that don't necessarily have any kind of IP contribution, such as the, the communication work group, you would not require to sign a WPA. A member's agreement is all that is needed because the nature of the communications work group is, again, not necessarily IP-centric. It's more around uh, outbound communication of the OSLC community efforts and, and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing to also note is that for uh, French and German uh, uh, headquartered companies, there will be a corporate authorization form that lets them know that they're electronically signing documents because there are labor laws in those countries that actually have uh, uh, um, concerns around electronic signature, electronic signature documents, so to speak. So there's a corporate authorization form that uh, you can go and download, hand it to your legal attorney within your respective company, 
to make sure that they're comfortable with the with the uh, IT policy that's uh, that's there for uh, for OSLC. And then once you've gone ahead and signed uh, the uh, WPA, uh, you are for that particular work group. You then just join uh, join the work group. You know, you're able to edit the wikis and so on and so forth, which is what Lee would go ahead and demonstrate later on. But that grants you access uh, to authoring the wiki pages that are there on the OSLC website. So the next slide kind of summarizes, uh, you know, it's kind of like an uh, access matrix, if you will, on exactly what one can do depending on the level of uh, permission that you have. Now, one thing I did want to also mention is that when you when you do work in work groups that are not IP centric, you are still required to sign a member's agreement. Okay, so that requirement does not go away, and and so you're able to at least participate in that, do outbound communication and, and things of that nature that will help uh, grow the uh, uh, the or, or provide provide more guidance and information around what what's going on with the OSLC the outside world as it is. So the impact of these changes, uh, what will happen going forward now is, one, there will be a stricter level of access control to at least uh, have better traceability and actually track everyone's contributions. Now, by default, all specification work that is uh, being contributed, everyone has read-only access. So you can go to the new wiki pages and, and actually see uh, the spec under development, the kind of comments that are being shared, and everything else around that. Uh, and only WPA signatories will be the ones that will actually be able to edit the, those wikis. Mm. Again, stronger intellectual property pr uh, protection for uh, uh, contributions being made. Um, and again, recognition, the fact that a lot of the OSLC contributions coming from different sources, it's not from individual X or individual Y or from business, to, you know, there may be a CM spec change that may come from the PLM, ALM group and so on and so forth. So there's structure there to really identify, uh, you know, who wants to go ahead and contribute what and where that change actually came from. Um, there's also recognition of the fact that not all members of OSLC want to actually author specifications. Um, and again, just because you're a spec author, uh, doesn't necessarily imply that you've gone ahead and implemented it. So that these, are, these are all the realities that we're acknowledging based on this new governance model as it is. Now, what that also means for the folks that are listed as current members, we will have to go ahead and uh, reach out to them and also make sure that they sign uh, the new documents as well. And as a matter of fact, uh, a few of the folks that are on the call here, actually a lot of, all the folks that are on the call except I think for Bob Myers, have gone ahead and signed the uh, WPA. So uh, the WPA and the members' agreement. So this this all is being published and will also be made live uh, um, by the end of the month. The other thing to add is when we had the steering committee meeting uh, in uh, at Innovate, all the members that were participating in the steering committee meeting uh, actually had signed the members' agreement. I think we did, we had only one member that couldn't sign because they were still reviewing the document, the legal document. But, uh, and again, when they were participating, they limited their participation because of the seriousness around the members' agreement uh, and the exceptions to the bylaws as well. But by and large, this was something that, uh, as of today, all steering committee members have signed the members' agreement. We are in the process of publishing the WPA. And one thing to also understand is the way we developed these guidelines for, or these uh, legal documents, so to speak, was not in a vacuum. We actually reached out to the community, as a matter of fact, it was made available uh, on open-services.net to get feedback. And we did get feedback, pretty vocal feedback from some of the steering committee members uh, for, uh, from all spheres, and uh, we were able to incorporate that and make sure that we were able to preserve what we've already had with OSLC and just add the right level of protection to make sure that the work can keep on going uh, unencumbered. So what is the rollout schedule? Um, we're right now in the process, as I mentioned, you know, we're, I'm sharing this with you right now, but by, and I believe Lee had sent a note out to all the work group leads 
uh, requesting what uh, in-flight documents, not the old ones, uh, but the in-flight documents that are in the wiki that will continue to change, what need to be migrated over to the new wiki. The old wiki will be locked down. It is not going any going anywhere. We will keep it. It is just being archived, and it will be used for referential purposes. Any new content that will be provided will actually go down, go in the new wiki. Uh, and uh, and Lee will elaborate more on this later on. But there will be banners and things like that on the old wiki that will redirect uh, folks to the new wiki if they want to contribute, and so on and so forth. Uh, but that's what will be happening. And the end goal is to get this entire thing rolled out by the end of August. All right. Some of the resources that you have. Um, we have the FAQs now. So if you go to open-services slash participation FAQs, um, it is uh, the, some of the FAQs around the new governance model and uh, uh, and other questions that you may have about the different uh, bodies that we're in, uh, introducing into OSLC, they're answered there. Uh, the workgroup best practices have been revised, and we've actually uh, provided, a, uh, it's again there under the uh, uh, participate section of OSLC, and also the legal agreements. So if you want to go ahead, if you have a lot of time in your hands, you want to go peruse some legal uh, jargon, uh, you're more than welcome to go to that URL. And again, feel free to ask questions. There's actually a forum posting that is soliciting questions from folks. So if you have questions there, please post your questions there, and we'll be more than happy to answer any kind of questions um, on the front regarding the, uh, the legal documents in general. All right. So any questions so far before we move on to the demo? All right, Sean, I'll, uh, or Lee, should I just hand it directly over to you? You should be able to do that, Kartik, yeah. Okay. All right, uh, Lee? I'm uh, getting the screen sharing up and going. All right, anyone uh, want to holler when they can see my uh, browser? I, I see it, Lee. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, I'll just get going then. So um, to support all these changes to the governance, we had to do uh, a little bit of uh, reshuffling and, and tweaking and adjustments to the uh, the site uh, in a lot of various places. Uh, some of the more minor changes, um, we used to have a page that was a, a list of, uh, of, of organizations uh, that we called members. Um, it was just any organization that had, uh, you know, contributed or come to a, uh, a work group meeting or, uh, you know, made software. Um, and we called them members, um, but now member – doing air quotes, which you can't see. Member has a very specific meaning now to uh, people that have signed a member's agreement. So this page that used to be members is now organizations, and it's the same list that just have a different heading on it. Um, other other tweaks are that the, uh, the the page about participating in the OSLC community, I've changed the content a little bit. Um, I'll probably be changing it more eventually as we start rolling it out officially. Um, it, it's tweaked here and there to discuss the new governance model. Um, and I've also posted two documents that people are probably going to find useful, um, the first of which is a participation FAQ that uh, just it rolls out um, and tries to answer as succinctly as we can a bunch of questions about the membership and the members' agreement, um, the purpose and makeup of the steering committee, and uh, – uh, work groups, uh, how they're going to be different going forward, and a whole bunch of questions about the uh, the legal documents, the work group participation agreement, and the uh, the IP agreements that you're going to have to agree to to uh, participate in any work group. Um, so there's a lot of questions there and a lot of answers. So it uh, it might be worth checking um, the 
if you've got any concerns about the governance going forward. Um, we've also posted, um, well, it's been out there in one form or another for a while, but now it's sort of moved up to the top level of the site. Yeah. Collection of best practices for work groups going forward. Um, we've posted this. It, it runs through the steps that you would have to go through going forward if you want to create a new work group or uh, you know, once a work group has been approved, uh, getting started with the work group, uh, some some discussion of meeting agendas and some, some tips for uh, uh, meeting schedules and uh, documenting decisions and, and planning your uh, your work group once it's approved and started up. Uh, oh, it also includes all the guidelines that you would need later on if you've created a specification and you need to submit it for uh, finalization. So we have that all uh, documented and updated on the uh, front-facing site now. And uh, that's, that's available linked right off of the uh, participate page. Um, so the, uh, the hoop that everybody's going to have to go through. I'm going to I'm going to demo that. I'm, I'm logged in as a, a registered forum user already. Um, what you're seeing right now. So we have a, a page of, of legal agreements that we present. Um, I'll, whoops, I jumped right to the members' agreement. Legal agreements. Um, it's sort of bare bones right now. Um, it, it will have eventually both the, the member's agreement, which you have to sign to become a, a OSLC member, and also it will list all the work group participation agreements. Um, I'm logged in right now, so I, but I'm not currently an OSLC member, so I am being prompted by a big button to sign the member's agreement. So I'm going to do that. The member's agreement, uh, Looks awful similar to some of our other legal documents. Um, it's shorter than most of them, which is a plus. Uh, the gist of it is that you are um, a you are uh, stating your uh, desire to comply with the OSLC bylaws, and uh, that's that's the big one, really. Um, a few other a few other legal things. Uh, you get down to the bottom, though, and this is a. Uh, we can do this all electronically, thankfully. We have to fight the lawyers on that. Um, so uh, to sign the member's agreement, it's a, it's a web form. You provide some basic personal information. I'll uh, fill it in. I am the web developer. Uh, uh, phone number, state and service, doesn't matter. One, two, three, fake street, doesn't really matter. Um, so the big question we ask when you're signing the member's agreement is whether or not you are serving in a representative capacity, like your work your work is representing a company like like IBM or Siemens or whoever, or if you are signing up as an independent OSLC member, which is a term that we define in excruciating detail in the bylaws. Uh, basically, it's that you're unemployed and uh, you're not working for any technology company. Um, we need to know this because this affects your intellectual property contributions going forward if you join any work groups. Um, if, if, if you're a representative of a company and you join a work group, you are also, uh, your work as a representative of that company is being committed at the same time when you join a work group. So we need to know that uh, as soon as possible. Um, I'm going to say that I'm a representative because I am, in fact, an employee of IBM, which we ask um, and we asked also if they are your employer or they are sponsoring um, or financing somehow your participation in the OSLC community, which uh, is a important distinction according to the lawyers. Um, so with all that data filled out, um, I've got a bunch of checks to make sure that everything that is required of you is filled out and you hit I agree. And you will now be a OSLC member. Um, a nice little message like, thanks, you're a member. Um, now, once you're a member, um, that gets you a couple of things. Um, you can, the, the the most practical of which is that if you wanted to contribute to the uh, steering committee, or sorry, not steering committee, the uh, communications work group, or, uh, or any other work group that we decide is not um, working on a specification, 
Um, the members agreement will get you access to that wiki, and uh, I'll get to the wiki in a moment. Um, the other, the other, uh, the other third perk, I guess, if you want to call it that, of becoming a member is that now I make available the various work group participation agreements if you want to sign up and be able to contribute to any of our specification work groups uh, going forward. Uh, oh, well, we were looking at a partial list right now. This is just sort of my local server. I don't have everything up and running. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll sign up for the, the change management work group, and uh, they'll, all, they'll all be listed here, but um, sign up for the change management work group, and you will see – well, first you're going to see uh, – Kardec mentioned that we have some additional hoops to jump through if your country is in the European Union. Um, that uh, Yeah, your, your company is actually headquartered in the European Union. Yeah, so if you're, if you're part of an affiliate that's, you know, at the highest – level elsewhere that you know, that's incorporated not in the EU, um, that's, that's okay. Well, we only care about companies that, you know, the, the buck stops in, in the EU. Um, so they, they, they have some pretty they, – they care quite a bit about electronic signatures, so we have some extra hoops you have to jump through um, in that case. And, and, and just to clarify, when we say the EU, we, we – essentially the, the countries that constitute continental Europe – uh, the UK is an exception. Okay. Um, so I'm not, so I'm going to skip that. It's also frightfully dull. Um, so you say no here, and you will see the entire work group participation agreement, and uh, every, every work group that, that does spec work is going to have one of these. Um, the gist of it is we don't, don't want any questions about your contributions from an intellectual property standpoint. So we go to great pains, and by great pains I mean eight, nine thousand words worth, uh, to clarify your uh, intellectual property contributions and exactly where they're going and how they're going to be used. Uh, so for every work group, we're, uh, we, have, we have some boilerplate text that says what you're agreeing to. Um, we spell out the work group that you're signing up for. Um, we show the complete IP policy, which is a standalone document also, but we, we pull it in here and just so there's no questions. And that, that's a whopper of like 6,000 words that uh, spells out um, work group participation, um, their IP rights, um, uh, patents, non-competes, uh, royalty-free licenses, a whole bunch of stuff um, that you're going to be agreeing to when you sign up for a work group. Below that, Kardec is asking me in the chat, is the work group charter. Um, every every work group is going to have a charter, so here's the change management one that defines the uh, the scope of the work group, what their deliverables are, um, their relationship to other work groups. Most of most of them say that they are also active participants in the core work group. Um, the big one is uh, the target specification development organization of the work group, and we, we spell that out here because uh, in the future, our work groups may be submitting their specifications to some of these uh, organizations, your OASIS, your, your DMTFs, your, your W3Cs, and they have very specific IP policies, which, which we link to, so that you can, you can know going forward that, that as you, you submit information to this work group, it could be submitted further to these organizations. Um, so we, we lay it all out here for you. Um, so once you get down through all that, there is yet another web form. Um, the, the personal information is pulled from the member's agreement that you already filled out, so you don't have to fill it out again. And actually, we don't actually let you change this here um, because we mostly don't want things being changed after the fact. It, it, if something has come up that, that you, you know, you, you've switched companies or your, uh, your job title has changed, we can change that for you, but we don't want that happening here. Um, the only real question I ask, well, I ask two now. Uh, I, I verify um, some, some jargon about whether or not your company is uh, in the European Union, but the big question is I ask you to confirm that your status as a representative or 
as an independent OSLC member hasn't changed from when you signed the member's agreement. Um, if it has, I stop you from submitting this. Like, we, we want you to go back and do a new member's agreement if, say, you were working for Siemens and now you're working for Microsoft. Um, we, we want a new member's agreement in place and we want, you know, your new company to be aware of your activity um, just so there's no questions uh, going forward uh, for your intellectual property contribution. So that's really the only question I have on the uh, work group participation agreement is to confirm that nothing has changed. So I'm going to say that I'm still a representative for IBM. Um, and the other thing is we have, um, we stole this from the U.S. Patent and Trade Office. Um, they accept your name surrounded by slashes as an electronic signature, and they consider that good enough to be a positive action to say, like, yes, I read this, yes, I'm signing this, no, I'm not just filling out a web form. Uh, so we decided if that's good enough for the patent office, it's good enough for us. Uh, so we have uh, another field that uh, constitutes your signature to this document, and I check that it is the same as your name, surrounded by some slashes, and that's okay. I say I agree to submit this thing, and woohoo! I am now a now that I've filled out the work group participation agreement for the change management work group. I am a change management member, um, which means I now have access to the change management wiki. Well I'll write access actually. Um, there's actually nothing here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you um, probably a, a different one. Um, I'll take oh well, I'll take a look at the steering committee one. There's content there. Um, the new wiki, this is the new wiki. Um, the new wiki is uh, gonna is gonna actually enforce Everything that we've been talking about. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna switch to a different session where I'm, I'm not logged in uh, as that member, and you can read um, everything that is out there uh, for uh, on the wiki. Like any, anybody has read access, but if you want to um, write new pages or or edit existing pages, that's uh, that's when I block. So I block you, and you're going to have to sign the work group participation agreement. So now I'll switch back, and I'm someone that's, that has right access to a wiki. Um, it's it's pretty simple. Um, you got your standard, you know, wiki navigation. You can see a list of all pages. Um, you can categorize pages and, and see a list of all all the different categories. Um, new pages have a if you, if you want to write a new page, there's nothing. Uh, it's pretty typical. You get a dialogue, and this is my new page. Um, the the markup language is the same as the uh, forum. It uses the, the the markdown language, um, so it's uh, it's pretty easy to it's pretty easy to use. Um, and if, if you're not familiar with markdown, I have uh, a little little editor here that will guide you through. Um, guide you through uh, doing it, you know, if you do bold or lists or links or uh, headers or, or whatever, it Make, makes it pretty easy. Um, if you want to do links to other wiki pages, I've added, I've added a little uh, dialogue that helps you out there that uh, shows a list of all the uh, existing wiki pages. Um, I want to see the steering committee meeting agenda page, which is one that exists. I'll create the link. Um, another another nice touch is uh, you get a live preview of uh, what you're typing right below when you're typing it. So this is basically how it will appear, including including wiki links. Um, and you know that's, that's pretty much it. It's not very fancy. Um, I will submit this new page, and boom, there's my new page, and there's the text, and I can edit it going forward. Uh, you know, pages show. Um, page page history showing all the submissions and uh, when they happened. Uh, you, you can attach notes to revisions if you want to, uh, you know, say say what you've changed. Although that's that's optional. Um, the wikis also, you know, have a pretty basic. You know, you can upload files and uh, you can you can link to them through the different pages. Uh, pretty standard wiki stuff. Um, one thing I've added on is. Uh, 
anybody that uh, most of the work groups had to have, you'll see in the sidebar on our old wiki on all the all the home pages of the work groups that they had a list of contributing members. Um, I decided why not make that automatic. Um, anybody that contributes, um, they, if they edit a work group's wiki, they will pop up in the sidebar as a contributing member. Um, just automatically. So work group leads or anybody won't have to curate that list automatically. So that's pretty handy. And uh, going forward, since it's uh, it's tied into the rest of the site, um, any any metadata that I've been capturing on work groups, um, compatible software, specifications, all this stuff, I can start tying it in to the wikis and uh, cutting down on on data duplication and then making lists again that are already out there in one form or another. So I think it's going to be pretty cool to uh, be able to have all that information in one place. So um, that's, uh, that's the gist of it. Um, I'm going to start uh, rolling this out soon. Um, we, we pretty much got all the approvals in place we need for people to start signing all the work group participation agreements. So what we'll be doing is uh, – uh, locking down the uh, the old wiki, and I'll uh, I'll put a I'll put a banner up and give people a couple weeks notice um, to let them know that that's going to be happening. And then around early September-ish, I believe is the plan. We're going to lock it for future changes and uh, migrate uh, migrate pages to the uh, the new work group wikis uh, for edits going forward. So that's going to be happening in the near future. Um, and I think that that's about it for the for the demo. Um, I think I'm going to ask if there are any questions. Going once. Um, okay. Well, uh, uh, to wrap up, I think uh, I think I'll, I'll just say, you know, if 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 you if you or anyone you know has uh, any questions uh, about going forward, I, I would say probably direct them to to our FAQ on the site. It, it, it goes it goes in a lot of detail about membership, members' agreements, steering committee, and and what's what's changed with our worker participation agreements. Um, I think that's a good place to start, and uh, you can look forward to these changes uh, rolling out uh, in the really near future. So that's about all I've got. I'm, uh, I'm going to stop sharing, Sean. Yeah, thank you very much, Lee, and thank you to everyone who joined us today, and uh, thank you to everyone who watches this in the future. I think that uh, the, the demo that you gave there, Lee, is uh, a nice little piece of technology, and it's wonderful how it actually supports the uh, the, the legal agreements that we've created as a community, and uh, I think this will help us to uh, to continue to grow as it uh, we we look more and more like other like what other what people expect to see when they go to develop uh, specifications or standards anywhere else that they collaborate with people from other co uh, companies. So again, thank you everyone for joining. Thank you to Kartik and Lee for your presentation, and. Uh, I look forward to working with you in the community. Thank you.